G'day everyone, just recently I realised the dresses for my girls need to be remade. They've grown, just like all teenage girls do. So I thought um, today we'd make a Hebity style dress. So this is quite an interesting one. Lots of, uh, lots of really good information here. This is a pretty simple, easy to follow pattern. That's all coming up. So today we're making a Hebity style dress. Now I say Hebity style, there are a few different dresses from Hebity, so uh, it's not the Viking dress, it's simply a Viking dress or a dress from the early medieval period, which would have in fact been fairly consistent across the whole of Western Europe, through so the whole of what is today Germany, France, England, Wales, Scotland, and Scandinavia. There are all those sort of different regions did have mild variations on dressmaking and patterns but there was a lot of similarities as well so let's uh let's make a heavy style dress right there guys so we're talking today about the um long sleeved early medieval dress typically associated with with vikings so we're going to make we're going to make one of these radio now pattern it's a pretty simple, straightforward pattern. You can use a very similar pattern between tunics and dresses. Depends what you want to do. Um, now, first of all, let's talk the actual pattern itself, radio. So sleeves, I do something like this for sleeves. You're gonna to need to forgive my drawing because I'm not actually an artist. <laughs> um, We then have uh, Alrighty, so this is pretty much how simple everything is. Now this is based on um, what we call extant finds or actual finds from uh, archaeological sources. So we'll just quickly run through through some measurements and so let's quickly talk about the pattern itself, radio. So we have um, this main piece here, this is the body piece and then you're going to have some kind of a dress opening, usually this was a keyhole type design. Now, when you do your first fitting, I then normally kind of bring this back in, but it's gonna depend on the person. Uh, now, let's talk about this radio measurements. Right, so this, if you used a tape measure and measured right around your body, though this is half of your chest measurement this is essentially half of your waist measurement um, now i just keep that as a very simple rectangle piece now this length here is your uh, the height roughly speaking from ankle to um, the top of your shoulder now this is probably a little bit speculative in this case i'm going to go with uh, a 10 centimeter square for my daughter. This length uh, is goes from the top of your shoulder right down to your wrist. Right, now this measurement here is essentially the circumference around 
your fist, right? Here, because you'll notice the fist is actually significantly bigger than the wrist measurement, okay? Everybody makes that mistake sometimes. At least I have. I don't know about you, but I certainly have made that mistake. <laughs> All right. Um, now you need enough flexibility in your design uh, to be able to move. So in other words, just because you've taken a measurement which goes around your fist, you're gonna to need to leave a little bit of extra allowance uh, so that you have freedom of movement, so that you can do you know, uh, medieval camp craft or fighting or whatever it might be that you're, you're planning on doing. Uh, the last piece here is um, the, the gusset radio. Now um, the gusset piece We'll go through that in a few seconds. It essentially, this is the, goes from the bottom of the dress, essentially to the uh, top of your pelvis. And then you can work out your, your gusset measurement. And that's essentially how kind of free flowing you want your dress to be. Uh, we'll talk about that as we go through the design. Okay, so that's super, super simple. This is um, essentially what we're working with. Um, now obviously you don't want your dress too free flowing but it needs to be kind of as I say able to to move and you need to be able to do your camp craft and and fighting and whatever it might be so that's all, all essentially fine okay um, there we go Ronnie O long sleeve dress now I am as a background to this, I am, uh, um, I use essentially Sussex as my um, base location for most of my uh, interpretations. So that is um, the southern side of England. For those of you who might know it, um, lovely part of the world. I unfortunately won't be visiting there anytime too soon of the virus lockdown um, now there aren't any extent finds that i know of specific to this location um, my sort of group i guess we do more sort of saxon inspirations but um, given the time period is is kind of 10th 11th century you also have a lot of scandinavian influence so most people in places like france germany uh, norway sweden finland England, Scotland, Wales are all wearing very similar styled clothing. Now there are some variations on that, um, so it, it does depend upon what we're looking for. Now fabric, let's talk fabric. Fabric choice would typically either be linen or wool. Now I live in uh, Brisbane, Australia, so wool's out for me, but um, linen is definitely in. Color choice. Radio colors typically um, for I guess the majority of people you would be talking yellow uh, which could be achieved through things like marigold you've got greens which could be achieved through uh, plants such as madder you also have blues which is typically achieved through uh, plants such as woad. Interestingly, woad is, is not a plant that grows very easily. Um, it requires a great deal of nutrient and water from the soil. So it would ha probably have to be cultivated. Um, now you could achieve other colors um, in other, other ways. We're gonna talk about um, dyeing fabrics in the kind of style I guess of 10th 11th 12th century in, in videos probably next year so 2021 uh, now anything else I'm going to talk about here okay radio seam allowance I typically leave a one inch or two and a half centimeter seam allowance what that does is it allows me to fell the seams properly and that way I get a really nice kind of lifespan out of my garments. Right, so I think we've covered most of it. Um, there we go, radio, just to fill in some numbers here, radio, we're looking at 
40 centimeters here for the filling of the seam. Now don't forget about, sorry, we're looking at, we're looking at 40 centimeters for the gauze. Right here, so 10 centimeters square for the gauze, 40 centimeters wide for the gussets. All right, now don't forget, you're gonna need to leave um, your seam allowance. So for me, I'm using um, a one inch or two and a half centimeter seam. So that needs to be around all of your pattern pieces. And that way you're gonna get a good result. Alrighty guys, um, we'll talk through some of the other issues as we go, but I think that's pretty much it for now. Ordinarily, I would wash and just naturally dry the fabric on the line, but uh, I'm not doing so in this case. Uh, I've got an event to get to, and so I'm gonna have to wing it a little bit. The advantage with uh, pre-washing and allowing your fabric to dry naturally on the line is that the fabric Oh dear. Uh, will pre shrink and it also helps to protect it, I guess. Um, it helps to ensure that your dye is sealed properly. So, nothing more embarrassing than going to an event and watching your, um, your fabric kind of <laughs> wash away in, in the rain. I've seen it happen. I've decided I need to uh, to make myself a workbench and that'll be one of my projects in December this year. Uh, my cutting table, aka the floor, is uh, not really what I should be using. So uh, for those of you who are interested in making a cutting table, I think I might have a video for you coming up. All right, so. Just quickly cutting these pieces out. Make sure you've allowed your seam allowance. Now that we've cut everything out, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the main body of the dress over Jess. Here we go. Now, everything is just super, super simple at this stage, okay? I need to mark on the dress where the bottom of the sleeve is gonna be, right? Now, I, this dress is probably a little bit loose on her, which is exactly what I want. And then we're gonna go down to about the top of her pelvis And we're just going to do a running back stitch along this area here. Right, so taking the markings that we just made, now what we're going to do is do a running back stitch because I'm fairly confident of uh, where my markings are. And I'm just using a plain linen thread. I'm leaving a seam allowance of two and a half centimeters, that's roughly an inch for my Canadian and American viewers. And we're just doing a simple running back stitch as our, our securing stitch. Once we're happy with everything, how it all fits, we've done a couple of fittings and we've, we've made the adjustments necessary. Then what we'll do is we will um, fill in the seams, but obviously that's a fair bit down the track. Hand sewing a dress like this does take time, so you do need to make allowances for that. But right now we just want to get the um, these two sections sewn in. First fitting. Now the, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to put our gauze onto our dress. Just try and keep in mind that the fabric that you've cut should all be cut in sort of one way up. So there should always be a outside of the fabric and a downside of the fabric. So 
So you want to try and keep that consistent if you can. And the next thing you need to do is find, so it looks like I haven't actually sewn quite high enough up on jets. That's okay. That's the purpose of fittings. Um, and what I need to do is add my gore in. Now that needs to be around about the top of her pelvis as we talked about just earlier. Um, here we go. But the length of the dress looks great. The width of the dress looks great. Um, now when I have just, just here, I might just also mark out where the sleeve will go because I can see um, I can see that is a really good shape for the sleeve to be and this is all excess here so we can do that kind of at the same time I usually mark with with crayons or pattern chalk just depends on whatever I have to hand and usually if I put my pattern chalk down then I can't find it for the next six hours so um, so there we go already so otherwise everything else is looking pretty good I just need to adjust where the um, the side stitching is but that's fine and then um, lift this seam up slightly add the gore in we're all good to go Alrighty, the next part of this is the hemline. So from the second fitting, I'm pretty happy with the, the fit, the height or, or the length of, of this dress. So now what I'm gonna do is look at, at the hemline. Now there's a couple of different ways we can do this. In very old historical garments would probably have been left um, just with a raw edge at the bottom. However, um, the time period that we're looking at really is 9th, 10th centuries and we're we're basing this off one of the Hebity type dresses. So I want to try and keep this as uh, authentic as possible. Um, the way that I finish a seam like this, and you can see uh, the raw edge is a little bit untidy like that. So the way I like to do it is, is simply fold it twice so the raw edge is captured within that second fold. And then I just do a whip stitch uh, around the, uh, the dress. So you try to pick up just like one or two threads from the, um, dress itself and Just use a very small knot in the end. It doesn't need to be anything crazy or whatever. Uh, whip stitch, I tend to keep my stitch width approximately uh, around about five or six millimeters wide. It's just a little bit of a painstaking stitch in terms of you do need to, uh, you do need to just have a bit of patience with yourself as you as you sew but it's actually quite a robust kind of technique this one and I find it works really well for me um, so a garment like this is not something that I tend to rush I, I like to try and take a bit of time over it and make sure I do it properly and especially if I'm aiming for something which is sort of as historically accurate as possible then I I like to try and um, keep everything nice, neat and tidy. Radio. So now we're just going to look at constructing the sleeves. The sleeves are pretty easy to do. Um, now in this particular instance we're looking at a slightly shaped sleeve, that's fine. Uh, when I put together sleeves for these sorts of garments, what I do is this square here is going to be uh, the gusset which will go underneath like so on the sleeve pretty much like so okay so what that does is it just allows this quite incredible amount of um, capacity to um, 
move your arms and twist and, and have a kind of dynamic range of motion, um, which I think is quite uh, practical for those people who had very manual kind of employment. So that's what we're looking to do. Okay, now remember this is the inside of the garment, so the seam is, is here. I'm looking at a, well, I've now marked this at a, at a two centimeter seam. Now, um, I often do, in this case, I'm just gonna do a, a straightforward running stitch um, down the length of the seam. So you don't need to do anything kind of too dramatic on this. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, fell the seam on once this is, is made. So actually, um, this becomes quite a robust uh, seam. So you'll see what I, You'll see what I mean um, as we go through that. Now the only thing with this is you just need to be a little bit conscious about um, keeping your, your seam kind of width uh, consistent and also the same for your um, the stitch width and that kind of thing. Two centimeter seam in this case. Um, and the stitch width of roughly speaking five to six millimeters. Um, because it's an internal seam, it doesn't really matter too much. Now I know lots of people, um, including some of a lot of my reenactor friends, will make their garments using a sewing machine for the internal seam. So because you're not going to see it, it doesn't really matter too much. So all right, let's um, let's finish this this off. Radio. Now our. Um, sleeve is now coming together. Now what I want to do here is add in the um, the gusset. All right. So the gusset, as I say, just allows for that dy dy dynamic movement. Once again, all I'm going to do is a, a straightforward uh, running stitch. Now I've shaped the sleeve slightly so it has a back and a front, that kind of thing. You may be able to do to see that. Um, this top layer is just slightly shorter than the, the um, bottom layer and that's fine. Alright, so um, now what I do, what, what the, the way that I do this is that I um, remember you need to keep your seams on the outside so that's fine so just be conscious of, of keeping your seams all nice and consistent and starting in the same place so um, the point of the gusset wants to be nestled in that um, where the start of the join for the sleeve is and once again I'm just using a straightforward running stitch on here um, you're gonna actually get from a structural point of view you're gonna get more kind of stress on this particular seam in some instances so you just need to allow like, like have that in the back of your mind, I guess, when you're making some of this stuff. Oops, there we go. And some of these um, historical needles are a bit, bit, alrighty. Once you've come to the end of that, now I, I wanna leave a little bit of space, so I'm just gonna knot that off. Remember, this is an internal seam, it's not um, the end of the world, so. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. So um, this just helps to balance out where the... Alrighty, so how do we finish a seam like this? This particular section is part of the sleeve and I've done a... This is actually a two centimeter seam. Now there's a couple of different things we can do. We could just leave it as it is and it will eventually deteriorate over time. Another possibility is that we could uh, essentially roll the seam or we could uh, roll the seam with a catch stitch, which is what I'm going to do. All right. So basically uh, what we're going to do is we just take a pair of really good quality sewing scissors. You just need to be a bit careful with how you do this. Uh, obviously because you don't want to go and ha, damage the other seam. We've cut off um, this section of seam. Now what we're going to do is we fold 
the other seam over twice, right? And what that does is it entirely captures all that raw edge fabric. Now what I do is just very carefully with a, a nice good quality uh, needle, I'm just going to do what they call a cat stitch. So the seam is held in place with that first row of stitching that we've done. And what this does is it, it basically reinforces the seam really well. So you have a nice strong garment, which is exactly what we want. But it also um, creates this, like it's a fairly kind of in a low visibility stitch. So if you're using a, a nice good color match thread here, then this should work out pretty well. And I'll see if I can, can show you once we finish the garment. I'm sort of hoping we can finish it up this afternoon. So that's the inside of the sleeve and the, the rows of stitching are along here. Rightio, we're now just about to add the sleeves on. We've marked out during the second fitting where to um, cut the dress so that it suits my daughter properly. Now what we've got to do is just um, put the sleeves on. Now I've left plenty of room and this should still, it's critical that you leave enough room. It's, this is not designed as a super close fitting dress at all. Um, this is designed as something that allows for movement. So, uh, and as with any kind of fabric construction, it's really important to leave lots of room because it's so much easier to trim something back after a fitting than it is to try and figure out how do I add some room here because I didn't allow seam allowance or something. So with this, um, I'm just gonna do again, a simple running stitch. Um, in that way, if I need to unpick, if I need to, whoops. Um, yeah. Uh, if I need to unpick, if I need to change anything, it's it's super easy to do. I can come back and do a stronger seam once I'm confident that I've got everything in the right position and everything kind of matches up the way that I want it to. Um, I, I want my daughter to be able to have a dress that's going to work for the next kind of um, six months, probably. Probably, you know, um, given her age, um, she's growing quite a bit, so it's unrealistic to think that she'll fit this dress for for a year or so. Um, maybe, maybe she might get a year out of it. I don't know. So, um, well, let's just get this this sleeve put on, and then. Uh, I think we really only have the neckline and the cuffs to do and we're, we're all pretty much finished. Uh, righto guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.